What's up, Scrollgers? It's Nerp here, and welcome to another video. Today, we're gonna play some Judgment. So, let's go right into that. I already bought one. So, we go straight to the screen, and. No big, strong creatures just yet. But. Aging Knight, Sister the Fox, Little Darkling, Boomer, they're all not too bad. On this row, I think I'll go, I mean, the Ash Runner and the Grave Lock Raider require attack buffs to be really useful. But Loyal Darkling is just decent on its own, but then, and Loyal Darkling, our Heart Disciple would not be too bad, so I'll just take the Loyal Darkling just to lead off with. And now we have all this stuff. I like Aging Knight a little more than Sister the Fox, so I'll grab that. Okay, so now we have a Lockling Brood and a Curse Monger. And an Outcast Rubble here. Three pretty decent scrolls. Because I have the little Darkling and I'm I could go Boom Reaver and then Locking Brood, or I could have Little Darkling, Our Heart's Disciple, and Curse Monger. I think I think I like that more, so I'll take the Our Heart. And then a Stitcher too, that's nice. And Languid, I forgot totally forgot there's a Languid here, that's perfect. So we have a nice decay thing going in Necrogeddon, but these are these two creatures are also very good. Duke's Skarmager and Brother of the Wolf. So I'll take the Curse Monger and another Stitcher and an Eager Scryer. Haven't gone Decay in quite a while, this should be fun. Do I want the Necrogun or I don't want one of these guys? No, I'm just gonna go hard and Decay. I really like uh, Decay for this draft. Stitcher or Eager Scryer? I already have one. I already have two four drops. Maybe I should take a, a three drop. Two Stitchers. I think it would be nice to have one Stitcher and, and stitch things to the Eager Scryer because he has one cat, so I'll take the Eager Scryer here. And Uneasy Alliance works well with the Eager Scryer. Now down here, I don't really have Decay stuff. Pest Simulator. Although 5 costs, uh, it's probably overvalued, but for Judgment, it could be pretty darn good. But here... I don't know. Decimation could be... I could splash to some order in, I guess. Because I have what, an aging knight. So I'll take the Ducal Infantry in here. Definitely the Pest to Simulator. Rot Eater, that's good. And then I have a Pillar of Disease or a Morbid Curiosity or a Mudo Fighter here. Probably I'll take the creature, the Mudo Fighter. He's not too bad for attack. He's like a. He's, he reminds me of Scatter Gunner, but they both have different abilities. Like this guy has like Magic Armor 1 and. Um, and Scatter Gunner has ranged attack. Probably this guy's slightly better. Now, Neuter's Needle here, because Neuter's Needle is like similar to Binary Root, but in Decay, like it stops the movement. So it could also be used removal because it takes down one health. So I'll take the Neuter's Needle, not too bad. Definitely the Rot Eater, who doesn't love their fair share of Rot Eaters. I have stuff down here, which I'll have to decide on. I'll take the Mudo Fighter. And then we don't have a single decay scroll on all 12 of these scrolls. I want to go mono. I have 8 decay creatures already, that's perfect. Uh, redeploy, magnetizer. A lot of energy stuff going on. I'll take the stuff that could be most easily splashed. Yeah, redeploy might be like I, like, I like utility scrolls, not creatures as my splash scrolls. So I'll take the redeploy. Okay. I think if we got an order this whole way, we would have had an okay deck as well, but I really like all the decay stuff we've gotten. Copper Automaton. Uh, Horn of Ages can be a nice splash, so I'll grab that. Uh, Alan Vital gives nice magic armor. Yeah, definitely this order would have been okay. The K, the Cleaver, and the Ducal Spearman. I think it's too late though, we already have pretty darn good. Decay stuff. Malevolent and Gaze is nice. It's like you give Curse 2 and you have like a Binding Root for one turn. And Festering for you is just kind of bad. Yeah. A 1 2 2 for 3. I already have the Pest Simulator doing poison. I mean, I do like taking the creatures, but Malevolent Gaze I think might be. might be just better. Or do I take the creature? 
Screw it, we're taking the creature. Nice, a life stealer. That's pretty darn awesome right there. Faith Blessing could be interesting to splash. Um, good luck, Freak. Wow. Well, this gives me decay, so maybe we should be in order as our splash. I'll take the Kabonk here. Animavore works well. There's more of case, so pass up the other one. We get it again. Um, Animavore. Let's go with Scavenger Construct. Maybe even the Rot Eater, but definitely I want to take the Life Steal. A nice, strong creature. Uh, Journey Miss is also very nice. I'm getting a nice mix of creatures and utility schedules. I really like another. Do I take another new Needle or a Vicar Extraction? We do go to seven decay, so we might need some help in there. But I don't think we're gonna go up to three order because we. Eh, no, we're not gonna be able to go mono. I don't think it's gonna take a lot for me to go mono. But three orders a lot. I think I'm just gonna take a second new Needle. New Needles pretty darn cool but then we have a return to nature here so maybe we're gonna have a growth as our splash we'll see we'll take malevolent gaze here draining this nice tribes and and halls of own loss are very good hex marks pretty decent so how many creatures do i have i have 10 creatures i should probably just take the blade husk five attack for two costs is nothing to sneeze at but then Turns to nature. What, what, what do we have in growth? We have nothing in growth. Well, we have an alambitol. Let's just take the creature. Let's take the blade husk. Uh, another little dark only. nice too. Now, Ilmar tribes under halls of Unlost. These two are great decay scrolls. Honestly, Ilmar tribes in might actually help me more because my only two drafts right now uh, have are darklings and they have low health. Like, putting this guy down turn 2. Actually, I also have Blade House, but he's a little health. Putting this guy turn 2 just, like, stops my opponent with his 4 health. Another easy line, uneasy line is also not sure because I already have 1. But Halls of Omasa, I think I'm going to take because it will be a nice uh, resource gap to the Necro Gun. And it's so valuable right now. The waypoints are rare. Get so much gold if I sell it. So I'll grab it. Another Animal Energy Siphon. So we've gotten Vigor Extraction, Returns to Nature, and Energy Stuff, and I haven't taken any of them just yet. Take Hex Marks, we have a lot of Dark Idol damage too. Shambler, Arthritis, Husk, probably take the Shambler there. Okay, Blow Darkling there. Um, Animavore or Energy Siphon? So I can do Energy Siphon, I could splash in something that costs up to 3 energy. I have Copper Auto in the deck, and that's it. I'll just take the Animavore, maybe I get lucky and draw a Scavenger Construct. An Anivore still can be decent on, um, on, you know, Rod Eaters. So, Mary Shambler over the Husk and the Arthritis. Another K. And a Watcher. I can go Watcher good in Uh, Rattle him is pretty darn good because, I mean, the chance my opponent plays a Lingering Spell in Judgment are pretty decent because a lot of Lingering Spells are pretty common. And then I'll be able to draw my Halls. Here... I don't think this really matters. Beetlestone is crap on its own. Chances if I draw other ones are just like so slim. Let's see, chance we go mono, 23, but there's a good chance we go mono. Anyways, I can take the summons because maybe I could just make sure I get that watcher back. Yeah, whatever, I'll just take the summons. Use Beetlestone does nothing on its own. Uh or speed potion is a nice splash. I'll take the Rattle Him over the stupid Infected Gravelock, one of the worst scrolls. <laughs> Mangy Rat is pretty bad. Maybe I'll take him though. Reaping Mask. Unstable 3, that makes like a mega loyal Darkling. Put this on an Eager Scar and he's gonna be awesome, so I think I'll grab that. Here I'll take the Rose of Bean Potion, maybe my Order will be my splash. And let's see, if we count this, we're gonna have. One more. We're probably going to go Mono, Decay, so maybe I should just take the Mangy Rat, but I do already have 13 creatures. Another Blessing of Haste would be really nice. Splashing in Blessing of Haste, Kabonk, and Horn of Ages, and uh, Rose of Bean Potion. I really like that, so I'll take the Blessing of Haste. Uh, Cursed Presence is pretty good, especially because I have some poison in the deck. No Infectious Bite, though. That'd be amazing if I draw that. So I'll take the Reaping Mask here. Uh, I don't know, I guess the high, I guess maybe we could slash bear pod at it though. Okay, curse present, another Kabonk. 
curse presence. I don't know. Um, I guess this doesn't matter. Uh, Ragged Wolf. Kabonk. Restless Bones and Unbind them there, right? These are our last three rows. So nice, I got another two drop. Slayer of Siege, he's cool. So Sanctuary of the Lost, my undead creatures have ward. So I'm going to have this guy. He's undead, so he'll have ward. Do you have anything else that's undead? Myra Shambler. Blade Husk. Uh, I feel like Rot Eater should be undead, kind of. I don't know. Okay, that's it. Those are my undead stuff. Well, I guess we're not going to be splashing growth anyway, so I'll just take Sanctuary of the Lost anyways. Who knows, it could come in any. And do I want to have a Purification in my deck? Or a Restless Bones in my deck? Again, another Undead Scroll. And I, I don't have that many. I do have a couple Undead things, like I just said. I just went over them. How'd I already forget? Uh, Blade Husk, using that to get him Giant Relentless could be really good. But... I don't know. I'm actually going to have just enough to go mono decay. We'll see. We'll see what I decide to do. Uh. Hmm. Actually, I have a Necrogeddon. Restless Bones, Necrogeddon. That could be pretty powerful. Sure, let's take the Restless Bones then. And the Slayer of Siege. Okay, I think this is a very good deck. First, let's look at what we have in our hands if we decide to go mono resource. We have a lot of nice removal, like, or like, yeah, utility source, like Nuru's Needle, Curse Presence, Languid, Moment Gaze. If we want to add, all right, we're not, yeah, we're not adding growth. We're not adding energy. Okay, I kind of like adding in Blessing of Haste, Horn of Ages, Roasted Bean Potion, and the Kabox. That would take five scrolls. At the very least, I'd want to get probably Blessing of Haste in here. I have to sacrifice for order to do that, though. Getting those utility scrolls in can be really, really, really awesome. But then, I, the, the things I would probably take out of this deck, maybe Animavore. Hmm. Look at the nice curve here. Actually, that's not a nice curve. <laughs> I thought it was so good. It's actually with a lot of two and three drops. Well, you can see a nice curve, I guess. Uh, things that I'm, I'm not gonna be able to get order naturally, so I'm gonna have to waste a turn sacrificing for order when I have to go high into decay. Let's just go mono. Okay, so mono decay. This is a very good judgment deck, guys. I think this is a 5-0-er, not even a 5-1-er. Awesome, found a match right away. Come on. Please, other person, accept, accept, accept. Yes. Alright guys, I had a change of plans. This is now a post-commentary, and I'm commentating over my whole Judgment run. A lot of you guys have asked me repeatedly to show more of the Judgment run instead of just the first match, because I do think the draft is really what people come to see but i understand that you want to see what happens in the rest of the run but that would require a really long video so this is kind of the trade-off i can show the whole run but i have to speed up the matches like this so i can't really go in depth about my plays and stuff so i'm gonna try that today and here i'm playing against anti-rad and not the opponent i want to face he's very good and um i did not get a good starting draw so i'm a little slow here that really slowed me down a lot and I'm just trying to hang on and not let uh, my bad start hinder me and I'm hoping my pest simulator can survive I have a Halls of Ohm loss that I could play this turn but by doing so I would actually just be giving up my pest simulator that was attacking the next turn so I just I like not to do that and I'm just like barely hanging on here so he's just being able to kill my stuff and i do have a nice way to poison his stuff now i keep the halls of Omlasa, and i don't love what i do this turn but uh i kind of save myself i guess uh what i do is i new needle there so that it doesn't have quite enough attack to destroy 
the Pesta Simulator. And I'm hoping I can have a turn where I could just get the Halls of Elmas out, because then I would be really happy I could start ramping ahead of him and make up for my slow start. So I get a Languid and a Curse Presence, which actually was pretty good because I can get rid of the the uh, Berserker right there with the Curse Presence. And I do do a Stitching because he could have killed the Meyer Shambler anyways with his brother the Wolf with a Wolf. But I guess maybe I shouldn't have done that because he had a Focus. He had a nice Order Splash, which got him a nice Focus. You'll see uh, his Order Splash come again multiple times. And now I'm just left with one thing on the board. It's not looking too good. And I just take this turn to just play the Halls of Elmasa. I think I'm okay now. But then he has he has a new order. So that's really bad for me. So he's able to get rid of my enchant my strong Pesta Simulator. So I use the Halls of Elmasa, get it back, and trying to refill the board. But he's gonna have control of the middle the middle board. And there he actually gets rid of my halls with a. Uh, uh, whatever that thing is, the fertile soil thing. <laughs> so that was really unfortunate. He had anti-lingering, and I played lingering in judgment. What are the chances of that? So that hurt me a lot. Um, but I'm totally getting stuff on the board again. And uh, hopefully that sister the bear can't move. But he does have a ranger's bane to get rid of the curse monger. So now I, I have a necrogen, but I don't really have enough units on the board to really make a necrogen effective. Like as you can see. You, you saw how good my deck was in the deck builder when I was drafting. Uh, this match does not show this this uh, this deck's full potential. Um, I just had a bad start. I have all the one drops. I have a couple one drops, two drops, three drops, but my but it just didn't work out for me that uh, I didn't have any turn one or two and turn two play. And my turn three play was the worst creature in the deck, a festering freak. But I'm actually kind of holding on here. Because I have all those guys attacking next turn, and he can't move his sister the bear. I'm able to languid there, and this draining mist was a huge draw. That you can see how awesome that draining mist was. It came up at a nice time. I wish I didn't languid though. Well, I guess I had the languid to draw it, but I wish I had it in my hand before the languid, because then I could have played the uh, Mudo fighter as well. But he still has a ton of units on the board, much more than me. But I th I'm feeling kind of okay, and he plays the the uh effigy of the queen which does not actually protect against poison damage anymore so doesn't really help him much it actually maybe hurts him in that he can't really move up with his uh kinfolk ranger i played on these lines to take out the brother of the wolf and i mistakenly have those two uh those two loyal darklings there where the relentless grave hawk can plow right through. So that was a mistake. That was a misplay. I made a couple more misplays in the match. I think if I made no misplays in the match, maybe different things would have happened. So now, misplay number one. I lost two creatures, which would have been really valuable if they stayed alive. Because I would have a necro again this turn. So that kind of sucks for me. And here I do have a malevolent gaze to kind of hold them off and get some protection on. But I I see that there's not really much I can do. And uh, what does he do next here? He, oh yeah, he plays a Faith Duty on the, on the Berserker. Just think about how strong Faith Duty on a Berserker is. It's just healing every turn. And I'm not even able to get those attacks off with the poisoning everything. And I have really nothing to get rid of. I could go with a Necrogun and take it out. But then my just Hus would just die and it would just be it would just be kind of a waste. So I, just, I have to hope that I can just spam units on the board and then have a Necrogun the following turn to take out everything. But I'm just, I'm not very hopeful right now. So I, I, I'm sure what to do here, I just place him down at the last second. And now Anti-Rad, he's, he's kind of almost top decking, so I'm just hoping he doesn't have like anything to really hurt me. He's He could win kind of soon. Really that Languided uh, guy down there, really, if he wasn't Languided, he would have won probably a while ago. So he plays a New Orders, but nothing really happens. I think after I was trying to maybe win or something, but I'm not sure if he knew what he was doing there. So he messed up a little bit, but... My mess ups were, were pretty big in this match, so they uh Yeah, so then I have the I actually play the Neuro's Needle on that so that he so that I can move away from him and I won't have my countdown increased. But you see, I messed up in that 
I forgot to move my units. That's misplay number two. If I move my units out of the way, they would have those those my Pestimilar and my Moodle Fighter would have attacked next turn. So that was a uh, probably even bigger misplay than the last misplay. So now they don't attack this turn, and I'm sure you guys know what I'm talking about. And this is like the writing on the wall. I have really nothing I can do. Uh, the best I can do is Necro get in where the, my things would just die, and actually I would lose. So um, yeah, this is I. I I was I was able to like kind of have some protection going on there with the fester and freak and stuff, but all I needed to get one thing to attack was that, and he just played a rally, so he had a rally that entire time. But yeah, so I got a loss with my first uh, first match with this deck, and I was kind of disappointed with that because I thought the deck was really 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 good. So I'm hoping to I was hoping to get like five more wins now, make up for my first loss, which is anti rad. And um, this match, uh, you see, a pretty darn perfect curve right there. And that turn one Meyer Shambler really ties him up because he can put anything on the board and it would be threatened by the Meyer Shambler. The only thing that could hurt me here would probably be like a Frost Scale. But so he wisely does not play a creature this, that turn because I could have made the Meyer Shambler attack anywhere on the board. I get a little lucky there that it goes right behind the Rod Eater there so a Ragged Wolf would not kill it. And I'm looking pretty darn good in this match. He plays a Breaker but I could just go and threaten it up top. And I elect actually not to Languid here because I think I can destroy that Breaker with that having to do anything because I have two three attack units attacking next turn and uh, then I have a nice curve up to Cursemonger and Lifesteal the next turns so it is like a perfect mono decay curve for me this match a nice a very nice bounce back from last match where I made a lot of misplays and had a very rough start so I play the Cursemonger get rid of uh, the Breaker and the Sister of the Fox and then I uh, play that and then he surrenders wisely because he has no chance after that, my perfect curve. So then in match three, I have another turn one Meyer Shambler. I'm playing as Ruined Soldier. And I uh, get the. He sparks it, so that's unfortunate for me. And so, and I'm also going to have another dead turn this following turn because I'm not at my four drops yet. But he had a burn too, so that kind of sucked. He had a spark and a burn for my two early creatures. But I'm still feeling okay because I have uh, five drops to play. So he uh, gets a gun automaton out, and I'm probably just going to play my other 5 drop this turn. And here I am, just going, hoping that uh, I can somehow survive this. He plays a... Look, look at the cannon automaton jiggle like that. So I play two creatures there. I am liking what my board looks like right now. But then he plays charge coil and a plating, which means I can't really kill that cannon. But, uh, actually, but I actually can Newer's Needle it, so it's almost like a Binding Root, so he can't really get away. Or he can't really engage me. But that Charge Coil is pretty annoying to me. And then he plays another Charge Coil, so I can't really get rid of those structures as decay. So I'm just kind of worried here that those Charge Coils are just going to ping me to death. And um, so I sacrifice for scrolls. I top deck an Uneasy Alliance, which will be good enough to get rid of the, the Cannon Automaton. Even though the Cannon Automaton was not a huge deal this turn. So he has something that's attacking, and he's going to be able to take out my life stealer this turn, and he has the charge goal is just going off every turn. Then he has that guy. Unfortunately, I can't play Animavore on opponent creatures, so I couldn't kill him like that. And I do play the Halls of Home Lassa now, so I'll slowly outramp him. He gets him on dispersal, and now he almost gets a board clear, and now it's not looking too good for me. I had a pretty good start, but really, those charge coils really saved him. I couldn't really do anything about them sitting up top on the board. But I topped like a Draining Mist, which really helps at this point in the game, because those Charge Coils are going to take a few more turns to attack, same with the Lachlan Brood, so this is going to be a chance for me to fill up the board, and then possibly Necrogun. And I use the Halls to get back the Draining Mist again, because I know next time those Charge Coils are at one castle, I might have to use it. And, um, I, uh, just play some more creatures, like the Mudo Fighter and stuff like stuff like that. Or actually, no, I don't play the Mudo Fighter this turn, because I actually use the, uh, Cursed Presence to take out the the um, Machine uh, Divinator. I could have used it to take out the the little the little buggers, the uh, Lockling Brood, but I wanted to get rid of that right away so a Nukrin would be able to kill the to kill the Charge Coils. And here I did a Draining Mist again, so Ruin Soldier is probably feeling I'm pretty annoyed here that I had a uh, that I got the Draining Mist again. And there's a third Charge Coil, so there's really not much I can do. I just have to hope I can... I, I just have to hope I can go with a big Necrogun play to get rid of these Charge Coils. 
So I do ha I I'm lucky enough to get a lot of low health, low cost creatures this turn, and uh, that's exactly what I do. I place it and I place them around a char uh, watcher. So I'm just sitting here hoping that uh, I can somehow get a good watcher getting off next turn. He realizes I probably have a, a necker and he wisely plays a machine divinator. Uh, so those charge coils are now have four health, which is one more than a hustle attack. But I still go with the Necrogrid in here. I uh, maneuver my units so that I get to get full idle damage, and it works out pretty nicely. I'm going to be able to take the uh, control of the bottom board. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I kind of came back in this match now because he has a Thunder Surge, and he can't even Thunder Surge me because then he's is then the Watcher deals so much damage to his idols. So now I just think I have to. So I'm gonna hold on. I also have Restless Bones in the deck, so I'm hoping I can draw that next turn and get a surprise win or something. And he is trying to see what he can do to somehow win this. He gets uh, he gets some creatures down. That Iron Ogre, I have to hope I can kill it before it attacks. I have a Sanctuary of the Lost, which would make my all my Husks not targetable, but they don't really need to be targeted anyways, because if you have Thunder you can just click on the Watcher anyways. So uh, I do Languid to save my creatures a little bit. And protect a little bit and I unfortunately I did not draw the uh, restless bones so I wasn't able to do that with them this turn and um, he's seeing what he can do to all these husks that are attacking next turn he violence dispersals the watcher so now I'm thinking this that's probably really bad for me and those charge girls are still doing work and now I draw the restless bones so it'd be great if it's your last turn but this turn it still works as like a crimson bull which I kind of have to use because I have to take out that iron ogre the iron ogre has armor so without the restless bones he would have survived and I'm able to take out one of the charge coils and now I'm feeling good about the game again so what does he do here he does take out my my uh, life stealer and he uses a burn on my um Rot Eater for the second time, <laughs> and I'll just play some more creatures on the board, and I'm hoping that uh, I can, I think, I, I'm feeling pretty good right now that I can win the game. Now I play the Sanctuary of the Lost because now I kind of don't want the Husted Eye because they're not next to a Watcher, and I'm hoping he doesn't have a way to like sneak it away because my idols are kind of open. We both are, we both have done a lot of idol damage to our opponent. So now, and I also have a he hex marks in hand, so I might be able to sneak in a win or something. So uh, I get rid of the curse presence and get some scrolls here. I have two numerous needles, which means those are like two things I can just stop an opponent. And I put one of them on that guy, and then I kind of maneuver myself. And I'm giving up a hus, but it would cause him to move out of the way. So I'm looking at what could happen. It's possible I could win the game next turn with a hex marks. But he plays, an, he plays another charge coil and then a plating. And the plating I'm not going to be able to do much about. He plays a machinated so now I'm really close to losing on the bottom of the board. So I'm looking at what I can do. I can't win with the uh, hex marks. You see, if I, if I had a soul steal this match, it probably would have been like it would have been over now. Um, but I did not have a soul steal in the deck. So here I decide to at least clear the row. And... Um, yeah, so that's what I do there. And then he gets his Nox to spawn, and he has a, he plays a Thunder Surge now. And my board is almost clear, so now it's looking bad again. I have the Draining Mist. I could play right now, I could not. And uh, I, I I decided Low Darklings, I have a couple of them, might be my best bet at, coming, at winning the game. But he'll probably win before then anyways, because my idols are so low health. So I'm debating what to do. And I actually don't Draining Mist. I'll take the Charge Coil hit next turn. I think a Draining Mist this coming turn is going to be more important because literally all the sub attacks, besides the Snarkle actually, and the other thing you just played. So a uh, Draining Mist this turn actually is what I need to do. And I draw Necrogeddon, so I'm thinking, oh, what if Necrogeddon Hex Marks it might be my win? So I'm looking it over, and I actually win with a Necrogeddon Hex Marks on the bottom idol if he only protects it with two... Uh, two three or less health creatures so i'm really hoping but then he plays the charge coil there so now he has three creatures in that row which means i can't actually win this turn if if one of those three creatures down there on the bottom row weren't there i would have been able to win with a necrogen hex marks because i would have just enough damage to do it because of the hex marks to do three extra damage 
three extra damage to that idol. So, but I'm still feeling okay because I got the other Darkling, and I'm able to take out his Snorgle. So I can probably do the same combo this coming turn, unless he puts two things on the row with that, uh, that guy. And he does play the Plating. If he didn't play that Plating, I would have been able to win this turn. It would have been game this turn, because that Darkling would have taken the idol down to five, and then the two Husks would take out the two creatures, and then the other back Husk in the back would would kill the idol with the, with the, uh, with the Hex Marks. But unfortunately, he played a creature and the plane. If he didn't play the plane, I would have won. And I really think that this deck really could have done much better. I just got a little unlucky. So I'm kind of disappointed about that. But, you know, whatever. It's, uh, it's just judgment. It was, there were some fun matches. Um, I really didn't, I would really didn't think I was going to only get out one win with that deck. But... Such is life. So, uh, thanks for watching, everybody. Like the video if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more content like this. And I guess I'll see you all next time. Keep on scrolling, scrollgers.